Let someone say the king is here. I don't know about you, but when I think about a king entering the room, I don't know how, I understand that everybody not, is not able to stand, but if you are, let's, let's act like the king is here. Let's act like the king of glory is in this place. He deserves it. Woo! He deserves it. He deserves praise. You're not doing this for me. You're not even doing this for each other. You're doing it for the king of glory. He didn't do him. God has been too good to us. God has been too faithful to us. Even when we were faithful to him, he was still faithful to us. Y'all not doing this for us. someone was praying and Venetia was saying that you can't put new wine into old wineskins. I'm not sure who said it, but that is so true. You cannot put new wine into old skin, old, old wineskins. And so God is definitely wanting to do something new. And I'm, I'm excited that we are all here in this room because y'all, I'm telling you, I don't know if you can sense it or pick it up in the spirit, but God is doing something. Yes. And this is a set time that God has called us to this place here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And also, if you're streaming, you're getting in on this too. But your life will never be the same. And I'm not just saying that because I got a whole little nice message created or whatever, but I know what God is wanting to do yes. in all of us. And this is an opportunity for you to open up your heart to receive all that he wants to do. Um, I want to just first say thank you all for being here tonight. You may be seated. <laughs> um, wow. God, we, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Um, I, I, I want to first just give honor where it is due before I dive in. I first want to say thank you to Pastor Ty. Um, the man of this house who has allowed us, hallelujah, my husband, <laughs> uh, who has allowed us this opportunity as the women to gather. And, and you know, I, I know if you've ever done an event or things like that, y'all know things like this takes money, okay? It takes some money. Um, but just for him, just seeing the need as well as the man of God and saying go forth and supporting us as we did this thing. And, and I mean, y'all, we are here. We are here. I don't want to get too far off because I'm ready to go in this word and share what God has given me. But um, I also want to take time to acknowledge my mother in love who's here, um, Lady Ann Francis from Richmond, Virginia. Yes. Yes. And, and Pastor Raquel May is here as well from Richmond, Virginia. Lady um, and and I, I have to acknowledge the, the voices who came forth and the musicians. God bless you all. So anointed, Donita, Donita Dawson. Um, thank you. Thank you all for just blessing us with your gift and just 
continuing to set this atmosphere um, and, and just making, making, making it open for God to move. Wow. So my assignment, <laughs> I know full well, um, abiding in God, just spending time with him, and he has definitely um, to share his heart with me. Y'all know it's amazing when God begins to open up his heart and shares things with you. You feel unworthy, but then you're like, wow, God, this is what you've been wanting to do all along. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to share his heart with each of us. I'm going to read something that he specifically told me to read, and then we'll dive into to where we're going. But I want you to perk up your spiritual ears and really receive what I am going to read and share. We are entering into a new dimension of living. We are and we will experience the supernatural in our life like never before. This isn't just financially, materially, physically, but will be first spiritually. Supernatural spiritual growth, supernatural wisdom, supernatural instruction, supernatural love. We will begin to bear the fruit of the spirit in our lives like never before. This is the platform for everything else that will flow from us and flow to us. Our hearts are now being sanctified and cleansed. Our minds are now being renewed and we are being restored to wholeness. Distractions will no longer exist, not because they won't try to happen, but we will no longer tolerate them. Yeah. Create space in your heart for God to fill. The amount of space you create, that is the amount that will be filled. It's just like the widow woman who had the jars and the oil and, 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 and she was talking to the prophet and he told her to go collect these jars. It's, it's the second Kings four, verse four through seven. You don't have to turn there, but if you want to write it down to go back and look at it, he told her to go and get these oils because she, she, you know, was at her end, you know, and, and basically was getting ready to just die. And, and so he said, go, go collect these jars. And she had a little crude of oil and he said, get as many as you can. And, and, and based off of what she had, the oil kept flowing. And then it stopped, and she was asking her son to pass her another one. And he was like, that's it. We don't, we don't have any more. I'm giving y'all the Cliff Notes version of that. Like I said, y'all can go read that. But I just wanted to say that, or share that, because that's the season that we're in. What you are willing to make space, or how much space you're willing to make for God is what he is going to feel. That is what abide is about. Yeah. How much are you willing to die to your flesh, to die to the distractions, to die to the extra conversations that you don't even need to be having, to say yes to God, to listen when he gives you instruction and do it. That's called making space for God. And that's the areas that he wants to fill. How we steward this moment going forward will be the determining factor of what happened in the years to come. It's just like if you throw a rock in a, in a river or a pond or something, it has a ripple effect. So if you can imagine, we, we like, I, when God told me to tell you all this, I was just like, what, you want me to say what? Like, I kind of felt like, uh, who was it, Jonah, when he had to go deliver a word, and it was a tough word, but he had to say it. You know, well, he tried to run at first, of course, but I, I'm, I'm at the point in my life, I'm not running. God, whatever you want to do in me, whatever you want to do through me, whoever I need to say it to, if I'm at the grocery store, one time I was getting a massage, and I'm like, God, what, you, you want me to talk to the lady who giving me a massage? Like, what? And I'm glad I did. But that's where we are, being obedient to the voice of God, doing it right then when he tells us to do what we need to do. Do you really believe that God is real? Let's start there. Let's start there. Do you believe that he is a faithful father? All right, I want you all to turn with me to Matthew 25. And when the Lord began to put this on my heart, I 
God bless you. Um, I was like, Lord, kind of like you, Danita, like, what does this got to do with abide? <laughs> hey, where are we going with this, Lord? But if you all can turn with me to Matthew 25, and I'm going to share something with you all. All right. Let's roll. God bless you. Um, here we go. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy, drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out, next, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the, the day nor the hour. So, of course, in this parable that Jesus is sharing, he's talking, you know, to um, his disciples and he's letting them know just what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. And, and it basically giving them foresight about his return and coming back. And, and, and so he was saying, like, being prepared for his arrival because we don't know the day or the hour. And so I was like, Lord, what does that have to do with us abiding? You know, you're talking about, like, when you return and us being ready. It has everything to do with abiding. Everything to do with abiding. Because one thing we know for sure, we're all going to leave this place. Whether Jesus comes before we, leave, we, we, we pass away or, you know, yeah, and get us, or when we just die and we go meet him, we, we, we're going to stand face to face with God. Um, and so there, there, I think we get hung up where we begin to live just day to day, getting caught up in our own routine, our own schedules, and we're forgetting about eternity. We've missed where we keep eternity at the forefront of our everyday living. And being able to say, okay, I know I'm living for a greater hope. There um, is a, a passage that says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt. We... We spend a lot of time just trying to, you know, accomplish things. There's nothing wrong with accomplishing. There's nothing wrong with success, going after those things. But we have missed it where that has become priority over the kingdom of God. And we have to do better with living with an eternal perspective instead of just the right here, right now. We're, we're built different. If you've received Jesus Christ in your heart, you're built different. You have his Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you. But are we giving him room to lead us daily? That is a question that I can't answer for you. You have to answer for yourself. Is Are we allowing Holy Spirit to lead us daily? So we see in this parable that we had five wise women. We had five foolish women. And the foolish women, they didn't have enough oil to sustain them on their journey. Now, the oil that they were talking about in this particular passage is, it was the oil for the lamps, you know. They were meeting the bridegroom at night. It was a custom for them to where they would, the bridegroom would come later in the evening. By then, it's dark. And so they had to have these oil, these lamps, and then the wise women brought extra oil. Do y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? They brought extra oil. The foolish women only had enough oil to sustain them for their lamps. Uh -huh. And once it was out, it was out. Yes. I want to declare over you all today 
that you're not going to run out of oil anymore after this point. We're not running out of oil no more, you know? We're going to keep our lamps full. The oil can represent the Holy Spirit. God has given us Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of us, to equip us, to empower us. He has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. And we got to do a better job of tapping into what we got. We have to do a better job of tapping into what we have, what, what God, I am. <laughs> I take authority. What are we doing? Have we become so distracted that we, we forget what we have on the inside? Or, no, not what, who we have living on the inside of us? Holy Spirit. So one thing about this, this whole parable is what I notice is the oil, it costs something. It costs something. So the other women, they were prepared. Hmm. They were already prepared. They had already been stocking up on what they needed for their journey. That is, that is one of the things that I believe we as women, that God is calling to go deeper into him. We got to make sure that we are abiding. And when you're abiding, you're being filled with the spirit. Holy Spirit is filling you. He lives in you. And so how do you position yourself to continue to be filled by him? Staying in his face, cutting off whatever needs to be cut off. I know for myself personally, I've had to really cut off watching TV. And it's my time, you know, I do everything else. I take care of everything else. But Holy Spirit began to nudge me. And at one point I'm like, okay, but I'm just tired. I just want to relax. I just want to kick my feet up and do. But God is calling us deeper. He's not just calling me deeper. Now, he was using me to prepare me to share this with you all, but he's calling you deeper. Where's your time going? Where's your energy going? What's going on in your, in your mind? What are you allowing to take precedence? What, what, what thoughts are you having that's taking over the voice of God? We got to take inventory where we're giving our time and attention because guess what? That is the, ter- the determining factor of what, where you're getting your oil from. <laughs> There's a such thing as getting some, some, some bad oil, right? I'm not an expert in cars. Maybe y'all can help me out or something like that. But you, 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 you could put something in your car that can mess it up. Yeah. What are you putting in yourself? Yeah. What are you feeding yourself? What are you filling up with? That's my encouragement for you all tonight. Take inventory. Take inventory of, of how you're positioning yourself because like I said, we're looking at this thing from an eternity perspective. We don't just live day by day just like letting things happen. No, each and every morning that you wake up, you should be asking God, what do you want me to do today, yes. Lord? Where, where should I go, Lord? Who should I call? Do you want me to call and encourage somebody? Who do I need to, Lord, what do you want to do inside my heart? What fruit of the Spirit are you trying to pull out of me today, Lord? Take some time. We don't just live for the moment. We live well for eternal life. Don't just live for the moment. Before I gave my life to Christ, I was one who lived for the moment. I wanted to be on the scene. I wanted to be everywhere, doing all the things, (laughs) living for the moment. But now I'm choosing to really live for Christ, giving him my time, giving him my attention, giving him anything that he's asking of me. Lord, you can have it. And I'm not saying all this to say that this is an easy journey, but you can be encouraged because you know his spirit is living on the inside of you. Do you, when you're faced with a challenge, do you allow yourself to say, okay, I'm going to shrink back, I'm going to back up. Or do you move forward and say, okay, God, this one is beyond my control. Like, how do you want me to handle this? What do you want to do? Asking him those questions. He's there. I want to show you all something. (sighs) We don't just abide. We don't abide just to have God's hand. We we want his heart. There is a, a passage that I came across and... 
Holy Spirit just just really open that thing up. Uh, we can go to you can you can turn to Luke six forty five if you want, but I just want to touch on it briefly. It says, "Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks." Now we know that to be, you know, Jesus. I, he was talking to his disciples. And he was telling them, like, out of the abundance of the heart, you know, the mouth will speak. That means what you're putting in, you know, when you speak, that's what's coming out. And that, that'll let you know, you know, where you're, where you're falling on the, on the line of things. So I started thinking about that thing. And I was like, okay, God made us in his image after his likeness. God made us in his image after his likeness, which means he has a heart, right? (laughs) Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What does that have to do with abide? I'm about to tell you. So if I have God's heart, he speaks. Then I have his words. One word can change everything. The word of God says, heaven, earth, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Even Peter recognized when uh, Jesus was talking to the disciples, he said, where else can I go? For you have the words of life. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to get to the point. John 15, 7 and 8. Mm-hmm. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Did you all catch that? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let's look at that. Out of God's abundance of his heart, his mouth speaks, which means it's his words that are coming out. And he tells us, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever it is that you will and it will be done for you. We're asking, we're asking, and we're like, okay, why isn't this happening? I'm not saying that you're not abiding. <laughs> I'm not, you, you, you got you to gotta examine your own heart with that one. But this should make us really take inventory to say, okay. Not, and, and I want to be clear, abiding is not performance-based. Jesus already paid it all. Jesus already did it. We have an opportunity to partake in him as a vessel in this earth to be to be used by him. And then not only just we're not talking about being used right now. We're talking about us. (laughs) But not to not to not only be used by him, but to be purified, to be transformed, to be to, to, to continue to be transformed into his image and after his likeness, to be able to produce the fruit of the spirit in us. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. So he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So you mean to tell me that if I get real serious about this thing, spending that time with God, getting my daily bread, daily bread, daily bread. I don't know what that time looks like for you. And we're going to cover some stuff tomorrow about abiding in everyday living. But daily bread, something begins to happen where God begins to, you're, you're abiding in him, but then he said, hold on, hold on, I want to abide in you. Yes. Oh, you want to come in and abide in my presence? Oh, well, let me put something in you. Let me put my words in you. Let me speak to you and tell you the things to come. Let me encourage your heart and let you know that that thing is going to be all right. Yes. Let me declare healing over you, my daughter, and let you know that you're going to be good. Abide in me and I in you. Abide in me. And it's, and it's not just a one-time thing. This is a, this is a daily thing. It's consistency that we're building. It's discipline that we're building. Abide in me and I in you. So I don't know. I know everybody got their, their different times and schedules and children and family and things like that. But I want to encourage you, after you leave this conference, Start taking inventory of a time. Make time for him. Like I told you before, 
the more you open yourselves up to God, the more he can feel. The more space that you create for God, the more he can feel. And that's when you begin to see his words coming to life in you. His words speaking to you, telling you where you need to go, what you need to do. That thing you've been trying to work at and work at and work at and it's not working, it's not working. Then get his word on it. Put his word on that thing. Put his word on that thing. It says, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. What is a disciple? It's a follower of Jesus Christ. It's a student. It's one who is obedient to the voice of God. Some of us are struggling because we're not abiding to allow him to abide in us, to hear his words, and to follow the instruction that he gives us. So we have to reposition ourselves to abide in God. He says, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. So Lord, whatever, whatever I need to do to make that time for you, I'm determined because I, and, and the thing about it is like, once you begin to spend that time with God more and more and more, you begin to long for him. Yes. Just show up. Just show up. Just show up. Don't come with your expectations. Okay, God, you're supposed to be here in two minutes. I've been sitting here for two minutes and I ain't hear your voice yet. Right. You have to be careful with that time. Just begin to open up your mouth and give him some praise. Yes. Worship him. Act not. Don't go in there asking for stuff. We do that all the time. We, we wait till we, we, you know, things just get crazy and then we want to run and go to God and then ask him for stuff. We should be living in that place with him, living in his presence, opening our hearts up to be led by his spirit each and every day. That is something that I know is possible. Yeah, you may face challenges. You may have different things come up to try to take you away from that. But when you know what the presence of God can do once you step foot in his presence. You ain't worried about that stuff. I got things pending now that I'm believing God to move on. But it's not going to take me away from abiding in him. I can't fix it. I can't control it. I can't do it. I can pray. I can take it to him. And I can worship him. And I can thank him. Take your hands off of it. I don't know who that is for. But you need to take your hands. <laughs> Sis. Sis, take your hands off of it. <laughs> take your hands off of it. You've been struggling and toiling and, and striving and doing all these things when you should be resting in his presence. Amen. Holy Spirit will even lead you on what you need to ask, yes, God. what you need to pray, yeah. how you need to say it, how you even need to have a conversation. Somebody got to go and have a conversation after they leave this conference. I don't know who it is, but you're going to have to go in and have a conversation. But don't be worried. Don't, free, don't fear or fret about it. Holy Spirit dwells within you. Ask him what you need to say yes. in that conversation. Yes. And he will give you the wisdom that you need. I said supernatural wisdom. That's what's happening. That's what's being poured out over us. We ain't got no more excuses, ladies. No more excuses to say why we can't do something, why something is too hard, because there is nothing too hard for us. Nothing is too hard for him. But when we start trying to help his hand move some stuff, we make it hard for us. <laughs> we got to start going after his heart. That's where abiding comes in because it allows us to stay, stay close. And, and, and I'm telling you, it, it tells us that when you draw nigh unto him, he will draw nigh unto you. Yes. He will draw close to you as you draw closer to him. That's the word of God. Yeah. I don't know about you all, but I am not satisfied with where I am. I'm thankful, yeah. but I'm not satisfied because I know, I know God, I, God, God has so much more, Ms. Marjorie, yeah. has so much more. And even beyond getting all the material things and all of that stuff, yes, I, I want some, 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 some stuff. 
But even beyond the stuff, I want his heart. I want his heart. I want to know what he's thinking about. I want to know what he's doing. I want to know how he's moving. Because everything else, it don't really matter. Eternity perspective. Eternity perspective. I'm not living just for here on this earth. I'm living because I said lay up for treasures in heaven. We lay up. What are you laying up? Are you just laying up things here? Oh, I'm going to have me a nice little nest egg. I'm going to have my little 401k. I'm going to have all this stuff. It's like, that's cool. Yes, you should. Yes. Get your budget. Your budget. Yeah, do your finances and stuff like that. But you don't just stop there. Don't just stop there. You got to think about eternity. You got to think about where you're going after you leave here. You know how people say, okay, I'm going to say this for my family and leave this for them. What you leaving for yourself in heaven? Come on. <laughs> what are you leaving for yourself in heaven? What you laying up? Yeah. What you producing that's going to have an impact in, when you get to heaven? Eternity perspective. And once you get that perspective and start thinking that way, it makes it easier to to go to him and abide in him because it's just like okay yeah i see this situation you know i I see this is happening all right eternity perspective god what do you say about this because holy spirit gives us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness everything everything and i've shared this before sometimes i'll go in that closet and i'll be like lord what, what, am I supposed, what am I supposed to put on today? Like, what am I supposed to wear? And I personally felt myself getting agitated and frustrated, like wanting to throw the burn the whole closet down. The Holy Spirit had to check me. You better be thankful you got some clothes in that closet. You better be thankful you got some clothes up in there. But when he checked me, I stopped myself. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, you, you living in me, so I can ask you to help me. Some people are like, oh, why are you getting so deep with what the web? But it matters. It matters. <laughs> but you never know. Like, like, but I use that example to say, if I can ask God to help me with these small things, I know he can help me with the big things. Or if I can see him helping me with the big things, he, he wants to. He wants to. He wants to help us. He didn't call us on this earth to just do it on our own to just try to figure it out. Nah, he gave us the cheat code. He gave us the cheat code, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. Wow, Holy. (laughs) So in the next chapter over, Jesus is talking about watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. And just as we've seen with the, the, vir- the ten virgins and they had the lamps in their oil and, you know, they weren't, five weren't prepared. That's what it's about, positioning yourself to be prepared. Positioning yourself to make that space for God so that when he calls on you to use you, you will be in position and you will be ready. When we think eternity perspective, we can't just think about ourselves. It's about souls. It's about winning people over for the kingdom and the glory of God. So you can't just be so self-absorbed, me, my three, us four, no more. Like, you can't do that. Eternity perspective allows you to broaden your view to see the needs of other people. And one thing is like, if you're not doing what you're doing, to even win people over to Christ. Now, I ain't saying you got to be up here and have a church and a podium and all that stuff, but whatever it is, God, whatever gift has, God has given you, it is used to build his kingdom, yeah. not your own kingdom. Right. It's for his kingdom. It's for his glory. And so we have to make sure that we are keeping our eyes open, our perspective open, eternity perspective. Now, I want to give you all just a couple notes of abide, uh, abide points to note. Um, like I said, abiding, you don't just stay in one place. There are levels and dimensions that you can tap into as you abide in God. Because then he's like, okay, you showing up for me. Would you trust somebody that you just met with something valuable? You don't even know them. But the more time you spend with God, the more time 
He can trust you and you can trust him. He's a, you abiding in him, he's abiding in you. And it allows him to trust you to say, okay, I can trust my daughter with this assignment. I can trust my child with this gift. So we have to make sure that we continue to position ourselves. We have to make sure that we let God's words abide in us. Where are we running when something does happen? Are we running straight to our cousins, auntie, mama and them? Mama and them? <laughs> or are we running to the word of God? The word of God should have the final authority in your life. Beyond what anybody, any advice somebody can give you. Yes, you, I know you probably have your prayer partners. But one thing that we teach is we get a verdict first. So if it's a decision, if it's something that we're facing, all right, let me go abide. Lord, what do you say about this situation? How should I look at it? Open my eyes and help me if I'm missing something with it. We have to make sure that we're not running, even to the news, something chaotic happening in the world. The news is not your source. God is your source. God is your source. So, of course, you know, COVID and all of that stuff, it was like hearing all these conversations, seeing all these posts and all the, everybody got an opinion. Everybody got an opinion. Lord Jesus, everybody got an opinion. But sometimes you got to turn that stuff off. You got to turn it off. You got to completely turn it off. You got to not answer that phone when you know whoever it is that be calling and all they want to do is just say extra stuff to put feet. Nope. Silent mode. Do not disturb. You got to turn it off. We got to fine tune our ears so that we are first hearing the voice of God beyond any other voice. That's where we get our instruction from. That's where we get our direction from. That's where we get wisdom from. There are some things even in marriages where, you know, you might be feeling a certain way. You got to talk about some stuff. You're feeling like, okay, we got to have a conversation. But instead of running to your spouse and saying, you need to da 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 okay, let me go pray about this thing. Let me go just seek the Lord because it might be something that he needs to show me about me instead of my, me going to tell my spouse about himself. So any little thing, that's what we need to do. There's nothing too big, nothing too hard for God. We got to take it to his feet. Take it to the feet of Jesus. Hmm. Abiding sometimes requires waiting. I know we're in a generation where it's like we want it quick, fast, in a hurry, don't be late, all the things. But just like the virgins with the oil, how are you waiting? How are you waiting on God? I know we probably all got some things that we're believing for God to do, some things that he has spoken to us and some promises that we're waiting to be manifested. But there is, there is a certain way that we have to make sure that we're waiting when we're waiting. There is protection in the wait. There is protection in the wait. We want to rush it and we don't even know what's around the corner. You know, we don't know what God could be uh, keeping us from or protecting us from. You know? Oh yeah. When you abide, pruning is required. (laughs) Can I get an amen? Amen. It don't feel good, but it's required. Let's go to John 15 really quickly, and I'm going to be wrapping up. Um, Pruning is required. Let's see. Let's start at four. It says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But I want to go back up to verse 2. That's where I was really trying to go. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear what? More fruit. fruit. 
I got blessed with this, um, this arrow garden thing. <laughs> I, when I got it, I was like, oh, goodness, this is kind of intimidating. But it's, a, it's a, a, a little garden that you can keep inside your house. So you put the little pots in there, and it grows, and it flourishes. And one of the instructions that it gives you is it's like once the leaves start growing up, you got to prune that baby so it can bring out more leaves. And when I, when, when I started seeing the things flourishing, I was like, man, this is cool. Like, I don't want to cut it because, I mean, it's already so full and so beautiful. But... The instructions was like, you got to cut it. So say, for example, if it was here, I had to cut like right here. So you see all of that? I'm like, why would that don't make sense? But that's a part of it. And in and, and, and this example that Jesus was given, it was about pruning because when you prune, it actually produces a whole lot more. And that's what happened. That thing grew out so big, so wide. And... Of course, you know, me being, being the biblically scholar person I am, <laughs> I, I looked at it and I was like, so that's what Jesus meant with the, with the pruning and bearing fruit and things like that. Pruning, it does not feel good. Pruning, it hurts. It hurts because we, we you know, we, we, we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't like discomfort. <laughs> we do not like discomfort. But when you can see what's on the other side of that, that pruning and that pressing and what's being produced, like God, he ain't just trying to poke you just to, just to, just to get under your skin. And, no, he has an agenda. Amen. He has eternity on his mind. So he knows exactly what you need, when you need it, exactly how to, 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 to reveal things, exactly how to convict your heart when it's certain things is, okay, I need to give that up or I need to let that go. He knows exactly what to do. And unfortunately, not unfortunately, sometimes he uses people. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes he uses life situations. And, and we think like, oh, I'm being attacked. I'm being attacked. And yes, I, I'm not saying that there are not any spiritual attacks sometimes because we know that the enemy, it is, it, it is a real enemy. And he does come with his antics and all of this stuff like that. But we can't put everything on the devil. We can't. We can't allow ourselves to put everything on it. We got to take some ownership in this thing. But how are you handling the pruning? Is it too hard to where you begin to shrink back to where you like, God, this is too much. I don't want no parts of it. You know, I, I, I can't handle this. So I'm going to go and do my own thing. And we leave the place of God. We leave his presence because it's just too much. But when you, when you recognize how much God loves you and you really have a real encounter with his love, you like, like, like they plant, like, Lord, whatever it is that you got to do to me, whatever it is that you got to reveal, even if it's ugly, show it to me because my goal is to be more like you. So if you're convicting my heart of something, if you've been telling me over and over again to let something go, my goal is to look like you. I know sometimes it's a struggle to even have that heart to, to add, to say that. We, we all have different things, different challenges that can really shake you to your core. But just like the, the wise virgins who had that oil, when things like that happen, you've been in the presence of God. You've been abiding. You've been in that position. Not to say that you won't be a little shaken by it, but you, 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 what they say, take a ticking and keep on, what is it, help me out, help me out. Or take a licking and keep on ticking because you know better. Me and my husband, we were having a conversation not too long ago. We we're believing God to do something big for us, some things that he's revealed to us. And we were talking this week and I was like, man, like, even though we got this news about this situation, I can't, I'm, I'm, it's laughable now. Now, back then, had I not gone through some things and seen God move in my life, I probably would kind of be very fearful and overwhelmed and things and just in my own head. But when you know God and you have an encounter with God and you've experienced God and he shows up over and over again, that right there, I was just like, God, you did this. Lord, you did that. I've seen you do this. I've seen you work that out. 
so you can take inventory of what God has done. And, I, and that's, that's where we begin to, to, to shrink back because we miss the opportunity to take that inventory of what God has done. What God has done, acknowledging because we're so stuck on like what we want over there in the future. It's like, nah, but God, wait a minute. You did this in this situation. So I know over here, that's already taken care of. I can, I can rest in you. I can continue to abide in you. I'm not leaving this place. Nothing is going to take away, nothing else is going to take away my time and my attention for, from you and abiding in your presence. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here in this place because I know, I know better now. Like I know, I know what happens when I stay close to God and God begins to work those things out. Time and time again, we've seen his hand move. Whew. Hmm. Lord, where you want to go, Jesus? So in that verse, John 15, it even talks about even our fruit will abide. I don't know if you all, all caught that, but even when we have fruit, as he prunes it, there's more fruit. Now we can talk about the fruit. Now we can talk about the fruit. We had to talk about first, God, what, what, what you need to do in me. We can talk about the fruit for a little bit because that is, that's what's needed in this earth. People need to see the fruit. People need to see the, the spirit of the fruit, the fruit of the spirit from your life. It's like, what are you presenting? What are you putting out? What, are, what is your purpose? What is your aim? For why you do what you do. Eternity perspective. Eternity perspective. That's, that's what it's about.